chapter. Demon Limited Hunter Chapter Abyssal Sea Monster What is that? One of the destinations of the joint practical evaluation, Ultra Coast, in the middle of the Ultra Sea, beneath the storm clouds and surrounded by gloomy fog, the calm ripples flowing in from the distance suddenly surged into violent waves, a wicked, dark manner surged to the surface, then ascended to the sky in spirals, then, the sea itself lifted upwards in the shape of a mountain, Salty water speed down upon the sea like a waterfall, an unidentified figure slowly rose, revealing its massive silhouette. Evil manner spread through the air, following the currents of the gusty coastal winds. The proctor broke into a cold sweat. It didn't take long for them to realize that what they were looking at was a demon. They hurriedly held up their bracelet to contact the academy, but their bracelet did not activate, perhaps due to the demon's unique power. The proctor couldn't use their manner properly, while they could use it, it felt unusual at the moment, it was clear that the demon was disturbing the manor in the area, damn it, they cursed to themselves with fear flooding over them, the terrors of Elt Island and the floating island were resurfacing in their minds, but they remembered their duty, soon, the entrances of Octave's Hall, where the joint practical evaluation had been held, would automatically close and, be sealed with a strong barrier, this had been done to send the students who had arrived at the destination back into Octavus Hall in order to protect them in the case of an emergency, such as the appearance of a demon, at the same time, it would also prevent the students unaware of the situation outside Octavus Hall from leaving the vicinity, the proctor quickly scanned their surroundings, nobody was nearby, thankfully, there hadn't been any students who arrived yet, a gathering place was determined in advance, the proctor turned and began running towards the gathering place, a height suddenly wave approached them, when it came close enough, the countless magic tools positioned on the outer perimeter of the island were triggered. Simultaneously, a transparent barrier with deep pink rose petal patterns was activated, it was large enough to surround the entire perimeter of the island, created from headmistress Elena Woodlin's manor. The barrier would last for minutes however, the demon's power, mana drain, caused the rose petal shaped mana to crack, it would be unable to accomplish its role as a shield, however, the barrier managed to accomplish its role as a breakwater, the tsunami did not pass over the barrier and sweep the academy, after the floating island incident, Merchant Academy worked tirelessly to make various preparations against the demons, they could not, after all, depend on the nameless hero forever. Pop, above the sea, the terrifyingly massive creature's gills were flopping in and out next to its cheeks and neck, its round mouth, which covered half its face, repeatedly opened and closed, it was a deep blue color, with a slender body that looked similar to a stretched human, the creature brought more terror because it resembled a human figure, Ugwohe, its cry was similar to that of a ship's horn, as if calling to something, their cry stretched out, hearing that signal, its minions floated up to the surface with a splash. All sorts of bizarre marine specimens emerged to the surface. But they were all large enough to be differentiated. Even at a distance, one fish had its brain exposed for all of the world to see, another had its organs wrapped around its body like a spiral, and another fish was holding a slimy net covered with eyeballs in its mouth. Leaving those aside, they all looked sickeningly disgusting. The army of fish surrounded the island all imbued with a shadowy, vapor-like dark manner, the creatures either began to swim or fly with wings shaped like human hands to approach Merchant Academy, their thick-lipped mouths opened wide, letting out screeching laughs, with them, the massive demon also began moving, on the northern side of the island, at a hilltop, Merlin Astria, the female knight with a light green ponytail, stood with the other imperial knights as she gazed at the northern seas, she and the Imperial Knights she led needed to protect this position, the rest of the Imperial Knights and Merchant Academy's combat line, battle wizards from the Hegel Magic Tower in cooperation with the Academy, and the select few student volunteers with high skill all took their positions in separate directions, look at that vast sea, many lives must be conceived in its depths, wouldn't there be demons over there? Yes, of course, suddenly. She remembered what Princess White had nervously chattered about in the carriage on their way to the entrance exam. How coincidental. You have extraordinary intuition, Princess White. Merlin smirked playfully, but soon after, 
she settled her expression and turned her golden eyes back to the army of demons above the sea attempting to invade Mitchin Academy, daughter of a swordmaster, vice commander of the Selva Imperial Knight Division, the Fenrit Knights, Merlin Astria. There wasn't any particular reason for the Imperial Knights, including herself, to have come to Mitchin Academy, it was so that no matter what dangers came upon them, they will protect the princess, they will protect the people, they will protect the empire, investigating the identity of the nameless hero and volunteering to become an academy proctor were all, in the end, to protect someone. That duty itself was what made the Imperial Knights themselves, taking in a deep breath, Merlin shouted aloud, listen closely, we are a fort, the enemy is the demons, we will protect the northern region of this island, the magic knights and archers attacked the enemy with ranged attacks, the rest of the knights then took down the remaining enemies, that was their basic strategy when defending against invaders, let us fight, knights of Selva, Merlin shouted to the troops in a determined voice, she unsheathed her sword from its place on her belt, following her lead, the knights positioned behind her took out their weapons. They charged towards the enemy, meanwhile, on the roof of a building facing the Arkin Sea. One female student sat on the ledge, watching the army of fish demons charge towards Merchant Academy. She pushed the witch hat on her head down so it wouldn't fly off in the coastal breeze. She swung her dangling legs leisurely as if she felt no danger. This is really boring, there were beings within this world who were considered otherworldly just like the lavender-haired student on the rooftop, Dorothy Houtnover, she haved herself onto the railing, due to the frequent demon appearances last year, Merchant Academy had set detailed procedures to follow in the case of an, an emergency, and to demon defense system, she believed it was called, it just so happened that Dorothy volunteered to help protect the academy, and in the case of a mass demon appearance like the floating island, she had been positioned on the first line of defense for the western side of the academy, that was due to Essex's request, it was difficult to estimate just how many people Dorothy alone could replace, in other words, Essex had asked Dorothy to cooperate with the academy's faculty and help protect the academy so it would become even safer, many enemies were likely approaching this western region by now, but it didn't matter to Dorothy how many came, because she was confident that she could take them all, well, Dorothy opened her right hand, a flurry of colorful stars shimmered in and out of view, starlight manner, it was a unique element of manner that only those chosen by the fairy Stella could use, let's end this quickly, Dorothy murmured to herself quietly, the students who had arrived at each destination during the joint practical evaluation followed the proctors at their location back to the underground evacuation facility Octaves Hall, when they had finished returning to Octaves Hall, all entrances were closed, and a powerful barrier invented at the Eagle Magic Tower was activated. The Academy's faculty led the students on the surface to the underground evacuation facility as taught in advance. Several other faculty members also scoured the campus in case any students were left outside. Meanwhile, inside of Octaves Hall, the joint practical evaluation had been stopped, but because of the demon that had emerged from the sea, the bracelets used for the test were now useless, making communication difficult. So, the proctors who arrived at the gathering area followed Philip Meltron's directions. Some were sent to find and evacuate the students traversing Octavus Hall. The others were to protect the students who had gathered in the safest area. Since all the entrances of Octavus Hall were sealed, not a single student should have left its perimeters unless they bothered to break the barrier. Moreover, the barrier's exceptional durability made it difficult for most students to break it open, however, Merchant Academy could not predict every single situation. Is this the place? The Spade Paladin, a black-haired male student with glasses, arrived at the entrance to the Ultra Sea with the compash had followed, only the luminescent lamps nearby lit up the surrounding area, at the top was the tightly shut entrance, all he had to do now was climb the ladder, however, there was a barrier set at the entrance, its durability was remarkable, the spade paladin scowled, then concentrated ice manor into his right hand, then he set off his spell at the entrance, frost explosion ice element, bang. The glacial explosion broke the barrier with a single blow, the ability of the demon that appeared over the ultra sea, mana drain, did disrupt his manor, 
but his manner mastery was, was enough to break the barrier and pop off the entrance door, and so, the spade paladin climbed up the ladder and slipped out, just when he arrived to the Oceanic Breeze. Everyone in Merchant Academy felt an immense presence, Priestess Maia and Saintis Bianca, who had been wandering through Uktov's Hall, felt it, the spade paladin, who had just come to the surface, felt it, Dorothy, the Imperial Knights, and the other members out to fight also felt it, their bodies were overwhelmed by a measurable fear that cried from within, the density of the manner they felt was beyond what one could comprehend, they only sensed the manner, but it was enough to make them feel like they were about to be swallowed by an unidentifiable monster. At the same time, the eastern side of the Ultra Sea, starting from the Ultra Coast, began to freeze at an alarming rate. The Star Ice Spell, Frost Wave, the vicious waves froze mid motion, and the Ultra Sea froze over into a single large field of ice. The fish demons swimming towards the island had been frozen to the core, seemingly stopped in time. The large demon with a human figure staggered, unable to move freely. The flying demons coughed noisily in pain, their movements slowed by the fierce cold. Then, ice mana began forming in the middle of the air and took the form of a massive dragon, a grey hair. A white dragon spread its lustrous wings, releasing a powerful gust of ice magic. The magic beast soared into the sky and boasted its might to the world, then roared ferociously at the hideous demon standing out at sea. A man stood on the back of the white dragon, he had a chilly, pale blue aura emanating from his body, a muscular man over meters tall, his deep blue wizard robe could barely contain the muscles underneath, almost at the brink of bursting, under the hood that covered his head was a face darker than the night and two red glowing eyes. Many people on the surface witnessed that scene, most people were left in a daze, mesmerized by his unimaginable manner, who wouldn't know who that man is, the man who single-handedly defeated the floating island, the mysterious Octwizard whose reputation had spread throughout the entire world, the nameless hero. He had come, the spade paladin narrowed his eyes and fixed his glasses, he had just exited the entrance and was still crouched on the ground. He quietly glared at the white dragon flying towards the massive demon and the nameless hero standing on its back. Only after he had felt the man's manner himself did he realize why the queen hadn't been able to act all this time. Why, even if all four paladins fought together, they could not defeat him. No matter what he had initially imagined, that man's manner had exceeded his expectations, he seemed like a transcendent being on a different level, making him question whether they were the same species. The spade paladin stood up and watched that grandeur, that man was the artwork that they had to take down. Black monster inside of Octo's hall, Prestis Maia and Saintis Bianca were still finding their way out to the Ultra Coast, on top of the Eastern Seas, the nameless hero and the army of demons charged at one another.